the work that we carry out crosses the fields of international law, international politics, and moral philosophy. And what I'd like to talk a little bit about is the principle of the responsibility to protect, which is the focus of my research. This is a principle that effectively represents a global commitment on behalf of states and international organizations to protect populations from mass atrocity crimes. So genocide, ethnic cleansing, crimes against humanity of the kind that we saw in Rwanda in the 1990s in Srebrenica, but which we've also seen around the world in the last decade. Now this principle was developed in an international commission in 2001, but it was endorsed by all the heads of state and government at the 2005 World Summit of the United Nations, the anniversary summit of the founding of the United Nations. And at that summit, the principle of the responsibility to protect was endorsed. Our work is really focused on two aspects of the responsibility to protect. Uh, the first is trying to clarify the nature of the responsibilities that it entails so that states and international organizations can effectively act on their responsibilities. So part of the work which has appeared in academic journals and papers is around clarifying the particular ways that actors can fulfill their responsibilities. Uh, but more specifically, I've been engaged in a project um, funded by the Australian government uh, and its responsibility to protect fund where we've been trying to assess the most effective strategies for the prevention of these atrocity crimes. Because it's become clear that policymakers and actors need to get involved and need to act much sooner in the crisis curve, if you will. So what we've been examining are what the possible tools are that can be used. And our project looked at a number of case studies that help us to discern um, those strategies. We've also developed a strategic framework for thinking about the prevention of mass atrocity crimes that draws on some public health analogies around the prevention of disease, um, but which also tries to think about these particular acts as crimes that are perpetrated by specific individuals against individual victims. And that framework for thinking about them as crimes is really very different from the past way that we've looked at these situations uh, in international politics. International politics has been a state-based activity. States do certain things to other states, um, respond in certain ways. But when you begin to look at mass atrocity crimes, we have to rethink those tools and rethink how we can act in ways that will deter uh, particular individuals from committing certain kinds of crimes. So that's been the nature of our research. Our framework has been a really iterative process, and so we've engaged with policymakers who are directly involved in advancing the responsibility to protect principle and enhancing states' capacities to act on it. For example, the Office of the Special Advisor on the Prevention of Genocide uh, in the United Nations has developed a framework for analysis for preventing these crimes We've been involved in meetings with his office in helping to refine his approach to it, but also in the process to improving our analysis. There's also a special advisor of the UN Secretary General on the responsibility to protect, Edward Luck, who we've worked closely with. He's come to many of our events, and through conversations with him, we have revised our framework, sharpened it to make it more helpful to actors, both national governments and international organizations. We've also held a series of meetings around the world to try to get a regional perspective on advancing the principle of the responsibility to protect. For example, we collaborated with the Kofi Annan uh, International Peacekeeping Training Center in Ghana last summer where we invited uh, representatives of states in West Africa and non-governmental organizations from West Africa to hear their perspective on the particular kinds of situations and crises they face and how our preventive framework might help um, in sharpening the response to either the threat of these crimes or indeed the commission um, of these crimes. The responsibility to protect is a commitment on behalf of states and international organizations to act. But in order for them to act on that responsibility, they need to have better knowledge 
about what kinds of actions work and are effective, and about the situations in which tools might be effective. Our research is designed precisely to enhance that knowledge and that capacity so that events like a genocide or an ethnic cleansing will not happen again. We often heard after the Rwandan genocide, never again, never again. And the spirit of our work is to ensure that that never again is a reality.